you can find our hashtag in the chat, Disability Climate. And now we're really honored to have today's closing workshop led by Dr. Therese Wilcom, the Director of New Hampshire's State Assistive Technology Program with the Institute on Disability at the University of New Hampshire. Therese is a major name in the AT community, being specifically known for her AT maker work. She has been engaged in providing managing assistive technology services for over 28 years in the areas of home, school, and worksite modifications for persons with disabilities. She is known nationally and internationally as the MacGyver of assistive technology and for her work in rural rehabilitation technology. Dr. Wilcom has presented in 38 states, five foreign countries, and three U.S. territories, and authored 22 publications, including her most recent book titled, Assistive Technology Solutions in Minutes, Book Three, Make Stuff and Love People. And um, just a moment, because I wanted to let you know, and I don't know if it's gonna show this or not on my screen or not, there it is. This is her wonderful book that I have the fabulous possession of. And when I leave um, and retire, I'm going to donate it onto our AT uh, department. And I will say that I have loved this book. This has been an amazing tool. Love it. Now, there's there's my <laughs> personal quip on this because, oh my gosh, it's got wonderful stuff in it. And I love showing it to our consumers. It gives them such great ideas. And I also get the honor of handing out today's final workshop prize, which is a copy of Teresa's book. Megan, would you like to help me select a winner? Yes, Sue. But before we do that, I also have a copy of your book here, Therese. <laughs> but this book is a little extra special because it has a signature from the one and only lovely Therese for our one and only Catherine. So Catherine has done such a fantastic job putting this conference together. And we really just wanted to acknowledge her. So Catherine, this is going to be on your desk when you get to the office. We are so proud of all you've done. Um, and let's draw the winner of who's going to get that book along with Catherine. Uh, it looks like we have Susie Lindsay from DSLC. Do you want to talk and share with us what part of the state you're in? Susie, you should have your hi, microphone. I'm, hi. I'm in, uh, well, I'm in Sebastopol. That's where I live, but I work in Santa Rosa. And I'm so excited to have the book because I was thinking, I want that book when I saw it. I love making things. So thank you. I'm glad I won this one. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm very excited. You're welcome. We'll get that in the mail to you. Congratulations. And this has been a wonderful conference. It's my favorite so far this year. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your help, Megan, in presenting this wonderful pr prize. And now, if you'll please join me in welcoming Dr. Therese, welcome. This is such an exciting opportunity to do this virtual workshop. And I just really want to thank Catherine for her vision about a virtual hands-on workshop. I think this is like so cool. And thank you all for believing in this whole makers movement and in honor of Earth Day, right? About uh, recycling and repurposing. And uh, so this is, this is going to be great. Um, I think we're going to break the world record of the most number of assistive technology devices built in over a three hour period. I pride myself on, I call it make it in minutes. Uh, if you only had five minutes, uh, what could you do in five minutes to make a, a very quick device? So we're going to be making a bunch of, of different devices. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Right. See if, and just to save on um, video here, I guess I have to do that. All right. All right, so um, I just wanted to say this whole makers movement, there are thousands of people out there that are making really cool assistive technology devices. Um, 
I've been making, you know, assistive technology. I've created now over 2,000 different devices. And we're going to be talking a lot about corrugated plastic today and all the things you can make with corrugated plastic. But there's people out there that are making things using uh, 3D printers, um, using Instamorph to make prosthetic devices. Uh, there's all sorts of, you know, thousands of things that can be made very quickly. Um, here's a picture of my new book on Make Stuff and Love People. And um, I also wanted to see in the chat, I don't know if there's a, a chat box, I was going to put the link um, to this book as well. Um, but we utilize and we embrace these core principles of assistive technology and making things that are collapsible, reusable, portable, bendable, expandable. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of those principles as we create the different assistive technology. We want everything to be able to fit like in a backpack. And the part about using recycled corrugated plastic is that the chance of whatever you make uh, failing is really high because in the regular field of engineering, products are tested for many years before they're ever released to the public. And so you can do all that trial and error, but when you have somebody with a significant disability, uh, you start doing the trial and error. And But if you learn how to make things very, very fast, rapid fabrication, if you only spent five minutes making something, you would be more inclined to spend another five minutes to modify it, another five minutes. So um, I don't believe in using nails or screws or glue. Um, everything I do is with 10 different specialty tapes, and you'll have a chance to use some of these specialty tapes today in this workshop. Um, the other part I wanted to mention was that I don't believe in using any power tools. Power tools uh, require electricity. Power tools are expensive. You have to plug in. So everything is made just using some basic hand tools. Now, in today's workshop, I pre-scored uh, many of your um, items because I figured that you may not have uh, the tools that we talk about in the workshop, um, but you all should have a pair of scissors. So when I say, oh, round this off, you don't have to do that during the, the workshop, but after the workshop, remember to take a pair of scissors and snip off all the sharp edges and corners so that's the only thing you have to do on your own time uh, after this workshop. So here's a, one example of something that I make with uh, corrugated plastic. I make a lot of jigs and fixtures. And jigs and fixtures are things that hold things together. It can increase productivity in the workplace, in the home environment, in the school environment. And so I'll be showing some different examples of this is a particular jig that I created for assembling. We have these fixed mounting squares that we use with lock line. And we make about 2000 a year. And so we um, employ people with disabilities to help us with this uh, particular job. And what we discovered was that for individuals who are blind, individuals who only have the use of one hand, individuals with intellectual disabilities, creating a really fast holding jig um, speeds up the process uh, and snapping things together. In this particular picture, there's pink board, there's corrugated plastic mounted on top of pink board with lock lift rug ripper tape that you're going to be using today. And 20 years ago, we would make jigs and fixtures out of wood. We would cut wood, we would sand wood, we would stain it, we would varnish it. And God forbid, start all over. Um, What's nice working with corrugated plastic is we get this all free, um, mainly from elections. 50% of our corrugated plastic is donated from uh, election signs. 50, the other 50 could be a spaghetti supper, could be vote yes on the school budget. All of these signs that are made out of corrugated plastic. And, uh, This is Megan. Uh, 
when we gave our intro, we shared that Dr. Therese is uh, presented in many states and territories, and she happens to be presenting today from Guam, so it seems she might have lost her connection. <laughs> You're muted, Therese. Have I been muted all along? No, no, no. You just dropped out about 30 seconds ago. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> all of a sudden, I see this whole thing connecting. Oh my goodness. All right, so here's some examples uh, with- And your screen share did disconnect. Okay, all right, thanks for letting me know that. Share screen, share sound, and share. All right, so I was talking about um, you know what I can do? Actually, it won't let me do that. So there's a lot of, yeah, video going in the background. So I'm going to quickly go through these. We're going to jump into the different maker projects. Uh, this is Instamorph. So I was talking about jigs and making snapping jigs and, and things out of a variety of materials, Instamorph. This is taking those tap lights that you get at Staples, mounting it on some recycled plastic with Velcro, having the, the, uh, a portable light box. Um, I talk about umbilical cord clamps. Uh, we have government surplus and there were 50,000 stainless steel umbilical cord clamps that um, were being disposed of and came up with um, at least 50 different solutions we could make using an umbilical cord clamp because they're stainless steel. Um, these were where uh, there was a baby boom in the 1950s. And so there was an abundance of umbilical cord clamps. <laughs> but that whole thing about looking at things differently, so making rocker switches out of them, making um, devices for um, independent living, um, flagpole brackets, take two flagpole brackets, take them apart, put them together in the center, and now you have a fishing pole holder that you can mount onto a wheelchair. Um, repurposing, uh, the, this is a cherry pitter and people with arthritis having a hard time getting pills out. You simply put that, your, your blister pack uh, where you would put the cherry push down and it pushes the pill right out into your hand. Plastic plates, these are microwavable plastic plates. And if you turn them upside down, you can create a variety of mounting solutions. In this picture, I have an upside down uh, flagpole bracket on top of the uh, plastic plate. When you push on the plastic plate, it creates a suction. And I create a lot of solutions by looking at the world upside down and inside out and backwards. And we'll look at uh, different mounting ideas with that. So here's an example. And the sound's not working. All it is is just, I was at a coffee shop and I had a cup of coffee. I was drinking the coffee and I thought, hey, what if I take this lid off, turn it upside down, push it down in there. I've got a shallow lid. And then with the corrugated plastic, I just scored it, bent it over, and I wanted something that would pivot, right? And so I just got the wire here and put the, put the dice in there and launch it. But think about what else you could launch. You could throw some food in there. You could put a... So that's just uh, one example. Here's another example of recycled um, corner guard and making a dog treat dispenser. And he uses his mouth stick. He pushes the treat down. And I just overlap the corner guard. I found at the Motel 6, they had all this corner guard they were remodeling. And I thought, hey, I could overlap corner guard, create a tube. And then with uh, Instamorph on the bottom, I have a place where the dog treat, and dog treats are supposed to be administered at knee high. So that's what this gentleman in the wheelchair is doing. Um, light boxes made out of recycled election signs and parchment paper. My daughter was making cookies and she was using parchment paper. And I thought, hey, that'll disperse light. These are these tap lights mounted on recycled election signs and recycled corner guard and just making a light box for kids with vision impairments, cortical vision impairments. Uh, pipe, this is three quarter inch PVC pipe. 
and I'm using Velcro brand one wrap to secure it to their wheelchair. And this is a bowling solution for candlestick bowling, something really fast. And we use a ratcheting PVC cutter. Again, no power tools. Um, drinking and being able to drink independently. These are these quick grip clamps that you can get at Home Depot and then one wrap to create a holster for the beverage to drop into. And then that attaches with the industrial Velcro on the three quarter inch lock line. And then on that quick grip clamp, I'm using Instamorph that just shapes. And this is really great for where we can't figure out a way to mount um, a beverage solution uh, drink holder for a wheelchair. We can clamp a drink holder right on to the side of a table. This is made out of recycled corrugated plastic. This is, I call it the Lapaline. Um, it's a an Eileen kind of thing. We'll, you'll be making a pocket Eileen today, but this is just for being able to transport objects on your lap, covering it up with a high friction rubber material so that it grips onto your body. It also grips onto objects that you might have on your lap when you're, you're pushing the wheelchair. Here's my lab and these are my students who are helping out. This is a project in Belize that we're we're making portable book holders out of recycled election signs for students with vision impairments. You all will be making a spring clip today. And um, the spring clip you can use in about 25 different ways. And in this particular picture, it shows um, one is a hands-free eating solution. So for like egg salad sandwiches, cookies, um, and then if I mount it vertically, I can use that spring clip for hot dogs or other items. And it clamps onto the table and you lean forward and you're able to grab your material. And it, and it also expands. Um, below that is a spring clip that slides onto the waistband. This was for a student that only had the use of one hand, wanted to be able to hang on to the rail, walking up steps, but also to grab snacks, um, to have it waist mounted. Also a waist mounted cup holder. To the right of that is we look at body worn solutions, body mounting solutions. So this is for somebody working at JC Penney's only has use of one hand and also has a hearing loss and is using to type communication to communicate with customers and using a communication app. Below that is using the, oh, and so, so the spring clip is on the waistband and I added a shelf to that. So it just slides right over the, the uh, waistband to be able to hold it and then put in a strap around it. Underneath that is the spring clip being used for holding pages if you only have the use of uh, one hand so the pages don't flip backwards. And then to the left of that is two spring clips using being uh, used to hold an eye gaze board for uh, hands-free communication. And so that's, you know, clipping and that's holding that on and that's taking one of those book holders, slant boards and flipping it upside down and um, attaching the spring clips on top. All right, so this is showing. Fasteners with a pair of scissors for a long time. And then I remember seeing on one of Velcro's website, they make this really cool tool. It's this machine with this spindle and uh, it'll automatically cut up um, the hook and loop material. But then one day I was sitting at my dining room table, I was looking at the chairs around my table and came up with this awesome solution, my own feeder. And so what I did was taking three quarter inch PVC pipe and then this just slides in between the spindles. And I can put on as many, or I could probably put five rolls on at one time. And see here where I've threaded through the different spindles. And then what I do to get four inches very quickly is I'll put, slide this through, I'll grab here a little bit, I'll put my finger or thumb at five because my hand is only gonna come up to the particular uh, guard here. And so then I just slide it through, cut. cut. 
So that is how to cut Velcro brand fasteners very, very quickly. And I still have all 10 fingers. Um, using, there were these uh, boards that were round and I don't know what they were using them for, but I found them at the dump and I thought, hey, I could spray paint them black and I could mount lock line. I can make an iPad holder with that. And so this is a, just a vertical iPad holder. This I found in a gardening place. Um, it's called Gear Snake Tie Down. And I thought, hey, I could wrap that around a pen and create a writing aid with that. And it grips on. Um, I'm going to pause this. Let's see. There we go. I paused it. Okay. So Home Depot was throwing out all of their signs. They had a shed sale. They were selling these sheds. And I thought, wow, these signs are like really cool because they're white on one side. And I thought, hey, I could make a really cool, a simple platform for those tabletop push down scissors. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing in this particular video. Um, first of all, we're going to start with the utility knife, and I'm going to make a little score line right here at the bottom where that's at, and I'm going to make a score line right here on this silver line, okay? Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my core claw, and so if you can look down in there and zoom in on that hole, see where I'm putting the second projection in, and I'm sliding it until I meet the line. And I can feel when I hit that line, because it, there we go. And now I'm going to go down the center. And I'm gonna go one more partition over. So you can see I have one partition in between. All right. Now what I'm gonna do, pull that up. I'm gonna take my pair of scissors and cut these pieces off. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to remove my double-sided tape. I'm gonna fold that over. This is pressure-sensitive adhesive, so you need to apply 15 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. Hold that over and push down. Now you'll see that this has been scored. And what I'm doing as I'm putting it together, notice my index finger is right in between. And notice how I have this right over the edge of the table here. So now I can slide my projection in there and my hand is on top, not here. It's right on the top and I slide straight down. Now I've separated the two boards. Now, before I put this together, Sometimes what'll happen is you'll have a little bit left over that has to get trimmed later. And I do in fact have some left over. So what that tells me is when I put this together, I wanna make sure that it goes off to the left and that I have this so that I can remove that later. Or the other thing I can do is knowing that I've got to remove one flute I'm going to go ahead and remove that flute and notice how I have this off the edge of the table again. So now when I line these up, perfect. See how that's going to line up just perfectly? So I'm going to remove the backings. And again, this project is made out of a 12 inch by 24 inch piece of corrugated plastic that's been scored and taped um, two inches on both sides. All right, so now I'm gonna tip this upside down. And look at what I'm doing with my index fingers up here and my thumbs. I'm starting up here and just trying to, and I'm eyeballing it, looking it straight down so it lines up. Then I'm coming down here too to make sure that it lines up perfectly on the edge. And then I'm pushing down, great. So now we're gonna put our pair of scissors 
in here. And I'm just going to slide that. And there we go. So I want you to zoom in on here. So notice this is not all the way in. This is really important. So if you could just zoom in on this further. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to push that in further until, see that triangle? If you can go into the triangle like this, do you see where the corrugated plastic comes right into that triangle? That's what we're trying to film here. All right, now I want you to see what I'm doing. If you can zoom in on the dual lock. So now that I have this nice and tight, I want to make sure that it doesn't slide back. So here I'm putting it right at the end and then pushing down. All right. Now I want you to see how do I remove this. So to remove this, I push down on here. Okay. And you see how this is lifted up now? I don't want to ever touch the blades. Now what I'm going to do is rotate 90 degrees and it's going to slide. Same thing when I put it in, I do not want to cut myself. So I'm making sure that I'm touching the handle part, not the blade. And I slide it in and you're going to hear a click. So listen to the click when I slide it in. There. Now it will come out. So that's why we're using the dual lock. All right, now on the back of it is where you can peel and stick your rubber feet in all four corners. All right, so that gives you an example of um, just in terms of the corrugated plastic. And we're going to be making something. This is just a, a simple mount. I'm going to be flipping back over to I'm going to drag this over here and I'm going to, you are all going to be making a um, pocket Eileen and I'm just going to show this video very quickly and then we're going to assemble. Everything's been already scored for you and we're going to get out those pieces, but first to be able to show you what a pocket Eileen is. Hey, check out the Pocket Eileen. So it's portable, collapsible, and it can be used many ways. And it can fit in your pocket. It's got non-skid feet on the bottom of it. And so you can put the iPhone in, or the iPad in there. So I call it, that's why I call it the Eileen. So Eileen, my iPad. Um, I can also put my cell phone in there. Maybe I'm using FaceTime or Skype with that. So that's something portable. I can also turn it on its side and position the phone this way and turn the camera on and I can scan using QR code scanner. I can scan QR codes because you need to be about four inches away. But that's not all because I can also turn it into a document folder as well. So that will hold up a page of paper or I could also turn it into a book holder. So you have multiple things that you can do with this fabulous Pocket Eileen. All right, so now we are going to get to work and we're gonna make something here. So I'm flipping back over to this video. We are going to make a multi-use. I'm just gonna pause this and I need you to go into your kit and I need you to find these two boards. Uh, one board's got the hook and loop on it and um, the other board has like rubber on one side and white tape on the other. So I'm gonna give you a, um, a chance to grab those two pieces. And you notice I've already put the score lines in. Um, cell phone holder, you can also put an iPad um, in there. It can be turned into a document holder. 
And so you have two boards. This blue one is our mounting base. And on the bottom of the mounting base is this self-adhesive rubber that really grips onto the surface so that it doesn't slide away. And there is this double-sided permanent foam mounting tape. Um, and so this becomes our mounting board. So we're gonna put that aside. This has been pre-scored. There's a score line one, two, and then on the back, here's our third score line. And what we have to do is we have to break along those score lines. So we're breaking it right above the Velcro there. We're breaking it in the middle here. Now, the so I'm gonna wait until you break along those score lines. You have three score lines, one score line in front of the, the uh, Velcro, another one in the middle, and then you have to flip it upside down and you have the third score line on the back. So just everybody just go ahead and break along those score lines. Okay. Opposite end of the Velcro is what we're going to do to line this up. So see what I'm doing with my two. Okay. That mounting base. So I'm getting ready to line that up. Um, you have to remove that double side, the backing off that double sided tape that's on your mounting base. That's the base that's got the rubber on one side and then the double sided white permanent foam mounting tape on the other. So go ahead and remove that backing. And then when you're lining that up, you'll notice on the opposite end is the Velcro brand hook and loop material so that you're positioning this correctly so that you know how when you're ready to line it up. So make sure you take a look at that and you're ready to put the two together. Index fingers, I'm lining that up and I'm pushing that down. So when I talk about pushing that down, we're using pressure sensitive adhesives. So it takes like, a, you know, about 15 pounds of pressure for about, you know, five seconds. So hopefully you put those two together. Now I've got two pieces of Velcro here. I'm just gonna peel off. This is the hook portion of Velcro. So go ahead and peel those two pieces of hook portion of the Velcro, and then go ahead and remove the backings off of those two pieces of Velcro hook material. Brand hook and loop. So I'm just taking the backing off. I'm opening this up. So you're gonna open up your pocket Eileen and you have to put one piece on the left and one piece on the right. So go ahead and put down the hook portion of your Velcro on the left and the right of the board. And I'm putting a piece on the left and a piece on the right. And a piece on the right. So all of your boards should look like that. So I'll give you a second to do that. right so that when I tuck this all in it lines up now I can change the angle of that a little bit later now I have to put a lip on and in this bag you've got a couple of lips so this first lip so the reason you have two lips is is that some people's cell phones or iPads are um, thicker and the lip might have to be higher. So you're gonna take one of those lips, you're gonna remove the backing. So peel off the backing. And after you peel the backing off of the one lip, pulling the backing off, right? So that is so that I can put my cell phone in there and it won't. So go ahead and um, peel the backing off, put your cell phone. Now you can also make that steeper if you wanted to um, make it more vertical or make it shallower. You can also put an iPad in there. Now let's say that your um, iPhone or your iPad is really thick and it's just not holding in there. That's when you're gonna be using the second lip. Slide away. So that's something simple, but some of you have cell phones in these gigantic cases, right? And they're really thick. So that's why I threw in a second one. If you need a second lip, 
you can add that to the top and then you can drop your cell phone that has a bigger thicker case in there um, a lot of students like putting their thumbs in the sides here or their fingers or but you have to do something else here and that is see all these very very sharp triangles we have to take our scissors and lay them parallel not this way we're not cutting triangles off we're cutting triangles off with our scissors being parallel parallel to the board never this way and we slide that blade in to get the triangle slide it in get the triangle and so we're going all the way around and removing all of those triangles so nobody scratches himself so the nice thing about this is that I can then lay it flat it's portable and I can also because it's six inches from here to here when I put this up like this I can also put my iPad in there which is kind of cool and the rubber keeps it from like I'm pushing on it and it's not skidding across the table because of the rubber backing. And then I can also go vertical with my iPad as well. So I like that this can be used for an iPad, a cell phone, it's portable, fits in the backpack very, very easily. Now you have a scrap piece of corrugated plastic that we're going to use to turn into a document. All right, I want to show you what else you can do with this. So, yes, you can use it for your cell phone. You can use it for an iPad. Um, I like the fact that you can change. You can make it steeper or shallower. Um, if I make it steeper and slide it all the way up so that it's almost vertical, I drop a piece of cardboard or a scrap piece of corrugated plastic, and now I have a document holder. So you can see where it comes all the way up, right? So another thing that you can do with your pocket Eileen. All right, so you just made two items. So that's kind of cool. All right. Um, the next thing I'm gonna have you do is I'm going to have you make an eye gaze board and the eye gaze board we use for communication and you can use it for object communication. I was showing you earlier how we were using the spring clip um, to hold the eye gaze board. Um, so you're going to grab your eye gaze board is uh, there's it's in a rubber bands. There's a rubber band around it. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right, we are going to make a rapid um, communication board for object communication. Um, you can also do symbols, other things, um, if you need to communicate on the fly. And so we have two long boards that have double-sided permanent foam tape on both ends. And on the opposite end has Remo One tape, which is permanent on one side and removable on the other. But we're going to start off with all of our color sides we want facing upward. Next, we want so make sure that all your colored sides are facing upward. So go ahead and lay those down so that everything's facing upward. And once you have everything facing upward, on the two ends of your long boards is double sided permanent foam mounting tape. So there's a one inch piece on both ends of your longer boards. So you're going to remove the backings off of those one inch pieces that are on the ends of the two long boards. To remove the backings off the ends. And that's the backings, just the small little backings off of the four ends. All right. So now you should have all the backings off of those four ends. Going to give you a chance to catch up here. Now that you have that off, we're going to take our first one and again, we're going to do our color. 
colors facing you. I'm going to take my second short piece. Great. And now I'm going to complete my frame. There. Now we're going to flip it over. And a couple things. I could write with a dry erase marker. I could do one, two, three, four, right? In there. And then I could always erase it later. So that's what's kind of nice with dry erase markers. Um, I could also take transparency film and create a communication board on a piece of transparency film. Put that on there now. I'm taking off my remote. And notice I find if I flick the end, it comes off really easily. So see how this is um, tacky? Now I could put transparency film, um, but I could also, you know, put a symbol there. Symbol over in this corner, maybe this corner. Um, maybe put a cup here, um, maybe a marker, maybe this little gadget here on there. Um, I'm gonna put the cup over here put the knife here and then I can then lift it up and go and okay do you want to play with knives today and then I would see where the person's eyes go or let me know if you're happy or sad and so I would look at what corner or did you you know tell me what you need um, can you find the cup um, so it's just and then you don't have to worry about um, putting velcro you can be very spontaneous and I can take these pieces off as well. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to put my backings back on. And if I eventually do lose my stickiness, I just put another layer of the Remo 2 on. I'm sorry, Remo 1. Or, and then I might erase this whole thing. Um, and then, or transparency film, I'll put that in the folder. But that's how easy it is to make a very fast uh, communication board. All right, we are going to make a rapid um, communication board. All right, so you did that part. All right, the next thing is you're gonna be making the spring clip. And I was showing you all the things you can do with a spring clip. So let's pull this out of your bag. All right, so the spring clip, I want you to look at this. And um, so it's a piece of corrugated plastic. It's two inches wide by eight inches long. And it has two pieces of double-sided tape on one side. And it has a score line right down in the middle. And so what's cool about this is that you can make a spring clip, anything that you find, just make a score line right down in the middle. And then you're going to flip it over and make uh, score lines on the left and the right. And I've already put the uh, score lines in for you. There's about 12 different things you can do with a spring clip. So the first thing we do is we have a, a score line in the middle of that spring clip. And then we put two pieces of tape to the left and right of that score line. Then on the back side, there's a score line at three quarters of an inch from the fold line on both sides. So the first thing we want to do is we want to break along those score lines. Then so, we're going to flip this over. I'm going to pause that. So make sure that you break along the two score lines on the back. And after you break along those two score lines, then you can remove the backings off of the double-sided double tape, the white tape that's in the center. And so see how I tear and then it lifts up? So put it together and squeeze it, okay? So that whole thing of, you know, it's like about like an M so that I'm like, so I'm going to just freeze it right there. So see how I'm like folding it all together. I've taken the backing off and it's kind of like an accordion there. And then I squeeze it together really tight. And you may also like crush the flutes, so which is fine. Put it together and squeeze it, okay? 
and that's how you make the spring clip. Okay, so everybody should have that squeezed together and it should have like a snapping sound. And we'll talk about and show you other examples of what you can do with a spring clip. So I showed um, some examples um, earlier in this presentation, but now you've made that uh, spring clip. And this is just, again, the pages in the books. And all these videos and things that I'm showing you, inside the book, there's 500 how-to videos, QR codes. And you scan the QR code and it goes right to the video. It shows you how to make it. It shows how these different devices are being used. Um, but here's the other thing is, let's say you're getting tired of using your cell phone or an iPad or a tablet to scan the QR code. Just go to page two in the book because the QR code in page two is the electronic accessible version. And if you download that, um, you download the book onto your computer, you can then just click on all the hyperlinks. So all the, the QR codes are all hyperlinks in the electronic version. So you can watch all the videos right on your computer if you don't wanna watch them on your mobile device. So you have both ways that you can check out all the, the resources and all the, the how-to videos. And then um, the whole thing about the QR code showing how do you make a spring clip and how do you make a slant board and how do you make the Eileen. So um, that's just a, you know another resource. All right, so this next project I'm talking about, I'm gonna just pause this here is, have you ever had where the seatbelt comes up and grabs you in the neck, that seatbelt cr um, creep? And I really hate that. I'm five foot three and it, it, the seatbelt is constantly sliding up and grabbing me right in the neck. And so you're going to be making a seatbelt gripper and you have a little kit of materials so that it doesn't just keep gripping into the, the neck and sliding up. So you have three pieces of Velcro brand materials. You have a piece of Velcro one wrap, which is hook on one side and loop on the other. You have a piece of Velcro brand Veltex, which is soft loop that they use when they're doing um, like partitions in people's offices, cubicles. Uh, also the roof inside of cars often have Velcro in the roof. And so it's that really real soft material. That's what we're going to be using to cover up the hook so we don't like anything scratchy. And I'm going to jump over to this video. Hex and gripper loop. Rubber on one side, loop on the other. We're first going to start with our one wrap and we are going to wrap it around our seat belt. Next, we are going to take the gripper loop and we're going to... All right, I'm just gonna back up here a second. So see how I'm wrapping it around the seat belt and I'm wrapping around the seat belt with the hook side facing outward and the loop is facing inward. So the, the hook has to be facing outward so just make sure that you remember that. Next, we are going to take the gripper loop and we're going to lay it right on top. So the gripper loop has loop on one side and rubber on the other. So it's this rubber material that will ultimately grip onto your clothing. So just putting the rubber is facing outward and then now that loop is gripping on to that hook. There we go, got the hook side out. Next, we're going to take the Veltex and we are going to cover up the one wrap so there's no sharp edges. And that is how you make a seatbelt gripper. 
So this, you know, will slide up and down your seat belt and you can position it. So it's a seat belt gripper. So it's to prevent the seat belt cr creep from sliding up and down. And I also think I put a little piece of paper in there. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, so in case I went too fast with this video, uh, you all have this little uh, sheet here that will take you through the, the uh, four steps to make your, your seatbelt gripper. All right. The next thing is we're gonna talk about is lock lift rug gripper tape. This is my favorite tape. And that's in your bag of stuff. All right, we're going to talk about this product, Lock Lift Rug. So go ahead, it's yellow. So grab that out of your kit. Um, Lock Lift Rug Gripper Tape. Uh, I've come up with 63 different solutions you can make with a roll of this tape. It's this beeswaxy material. You can find it at Target, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. And it was really designed to keep rugs from sliding on the floor. But because it's this beeswax material, um, it's removable. It doesn't leave any residue behind. I use it to hold papers. I use it as a page stabilizer. A gripper tape. And I've come up with... 53 different assistive technology solutions you can make with this material. Um, you have a piece that's in your bag, but we're going to take this piece out. And I didn't want it to dry out, so I packaged it specially because when you get it on a roll like this, I have to take this piece off. I just want to make sure that you understand that. Just use your hands to tear it. Notice that I just use my hands to tear it and I do not use a pair of scissors because if you use a pair of scissors, then good luck with trying to get the backing off. It's so much easier by tearing it because then you stretch the plastic to make it easier to get backings off. Tear your pieces off. Um, you can tear what you need and, but this is this beeswaxy material and oftentimes it'll dry out on you and I don't want it to dry out. And so what I do with it is um, I keep the backings so that I can wrap it back up again or I'll put it back on the roll. Um, in your case, with your piece, what I did was I applied it to a piece of plastic. So you're gonna just peel it off the plastic. And now, see I didn't tear it, I cut it. And so it's going to be hard to get the backing off, but I really want you to try to get the backing off because I want to show you a couple of things. And I'll show you some more slides. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Just get that backing off so that you have it exposed. Let's go ahead and peel that off. And remember I was talking about like the different jigs I was making using corrugated plastic and pink board. The way I put it all together is with this lock lift rug gripper tape. Because let's say I'm a quarter of an inch off, I can pry it apart and put my jig back together because of this wax material. Peel it off, move it a quarter inch, push it back down, and I've got my jig. That's what I love about this material of taking things apart, putting it back together again. Really cool stuff. Pictures later, but. So now I see how I pinched the corner and tore it a little bit so that this backing would come up. So what's great about this is, is if you have somebody that only has the use of one hand, you can stabilize a piece of paper, right? And so that's what's kind of cool because it's not going to hurt your paper. Um, you can also, like if you wanted to put it up on a wall, right? You can stick this onto any wall and it's not gonna hurt your wall. So that's really cool. Um, I can wrap it around the palm of my hand, right? And for pages in a book, if I wanted to turn, or we had a, um, a planting activity with some students. So we put this around in terms of the finger to be able to pick up seeds or pick up different objects. Um, I've also used bigger pieces of this, so don't throw this away. Make sure that you put this back on there so you can use this over and over and over again, which is like really cool. And here's that piece of plastic. So you go ahead and so that it doesn't dry out. 
do that. But I will take longer strips of this and I will outline um, somebody's work surface, right? So that they're left and they're right. And the reason for that is you could have pens that roll away on you and when it hits the lock lift rug gripper tape, it stops it from rolling off of the desk or rolling off the table. This is what I use um, when working with students who are blind and we're doing maybe um, an activity, maybe we're doing a switch making activity. And it's so easy for things to slide around on the tabletop and, and, and fall onto the floor. And when it hits the lock lift rug gripper tape, it stops it, it keeps it. So I, I kind of outline our work area with lock lift rug gripper tape. So that you define the work surfaces inside this parameter. So that's another use. So you can check out the book for other ideas too on um, all sorts of things you can do with lock lift rug gripper tape. So that's your lock lift rug gripper tape. All right, now I want to go into the bazooka bubblegum kit. All right. This is one of my favorite products and this is called U-Glue. And U-Glue is, it's a thin double-sided adhesive. It sticks to just about anything you can imagine except for uh, silicone. And you can remove it by pulling parallel to the surface. So that's like really cool too. The removability, it doesn't leave any residue behind. But I don't wanna walk around with a roll of this. So I came up with what I call my bazooka bubblegum kit, my bazooka MacGyver kind of kit. And that's your last piece here. And what I did was, you can take this removable um, tape off, and I put all of these little pieces. So the reason I call it bazooka, remember, I don't know, bazooka bubblegum, it was about this size, right? and we'd have that in the pocket, but growing up on the farm, I remember my dad always telling me, give me some of that gum, because if there was a leak on the gas tank on the tractor, uh, he'd plug that leak with my bazooka bubble gum. And then he told me, always carry some gum with me in my pocket, because you never know when you need to fix something. So that's why I think you should carry the bazooka bubble gum kit here um, with you in your pocket at all times or in your wallet, because you never know when you might need it. So here I can put this down onto the table. Again, I don't have to work. So I want everybody to take one of those squares off of your bazooka kit there. And I want you to um, just slap it down on top of the table. And you need to watch carefully on how do you remove it because you never pull upward. You never pull up on it to remove it. Um, you never roll it. Uh, this is like a command adhesive strip. You have to pull it parallel to the surface. So watch this video very carefully so you know how to remove it. Because um, it's not going to um, ruin any surface. So I can put an object there, right? So what if I only had one hand, right? And I want it to go up and down so it's really strong. Now I want to show you how, how do you remove it? So you never pull up, you never roll it with your thumb. That's the worst thing you can do. So if you zoom in on this, can you see how I'm pulling it parallel to the surface? And I get these really cool boogers. And notice there's no residue left behind. Well, these boogers come in really handy because remember with the communication board, I can stick something on here, right? And I can stick another object. So you'll see some examples of where I've done like one, you know, bag openings, closings. And so you can use these over and over. The other cool thing is, is that when it loses its stickiness, I can also wash this in like Dawn dishwashing soap or I'll break it apart and I'll stick it back together. And it sticks to just about anything and you can put all sorts of different objects that you need to quickly tack on. So, um, yeah tons and tons of things that you can do with this product. So it's nice and strong. It leaves no residue. Um, it's great for, you know, rapid mounting solutions, um, fixing things on the fly. Uh, that's your bazooka um, fix-it kit. 
it's one of my favorite tapes and I use it um, for lots of things. When I've got to tack things down, hold things, um, making a communication aid, whatever, and I need to do something very, very quickly on the fly. I do that with the bazooka bubblegum kit, I call it. All right, I'm gonna have you make a fidget item next. All right, now we're gonna make a little fidget item. So you're gonna make a fidget item out of pop sockets. And I'm obsessed with these pop sockets. Um, I've come up with like 10 different assistive technology solutions you can make with a pop socket. Um, they're just really fun to play with. And then I discovered that, you know, taking two pop sockets and putting them together and what you can do with it. So go ahead and pull out those two pop sockets that are in your kit, in your bag of, of materials there with two pop sockets. And this has been quite popular. So the biggest part is getting the backings off of tape. All right, I'm going to give you a, a, a second here to get those backings off. So go ahead and pull the backings off of your two pop sockets. But what I want to do is I want to line both of these pop sockets up perfect so line them line them up and you're going to stick them together in the center so go ahead and put those two together adhesive to adhesive and now i'm going to squeeze it together and now check this out pull it apart it's nice and smooth on top um, some have also turned it into um, a little spinner and I'll like draw little images so that they rotate around so you can write on top of these. Um, you can also pull out one side to roll it across the table, but it's just a nice, gives you some really good um, sensation um, for people that need to have something to uh, fidget with. Um, just kind of a little, nice little fun little toy here. So that is something really simple and fast and easy to make. Um, so when I started using, because it also rotates, I use it on my track boards to slide things back and forth. I use it for communication. I also put a stress ball on top. I'll poke a, a hole in the stress ball for a writing aid. And then I will attach my uh, pop socket on the bottom to glide across the paper. Um, but the cool thing was when the pop sockets came out, they were like, I, they were like $10. Like they were selling them for like $10 on the internet. And I was like, holy cow. And then I found out a way that I could get them for 48 cents or, you know, 50 cents, but I had, would have to buy like a thousand at a time on Alibaba. And so you can buy them without any printing or when you go to shows, exhibits and stuff where they're passing those out as, you know, handouts, um, grab a couple of those. They're, they come in really handy for a few other projects as well. So now you've made a nice, simple um, fidget item. And um, let's take a look. Let's see. So now you've made your fidget item. All right, made the seatbelt gripper, made the fidget item, lock lift rug gripper tape. All right, the last thing that's in your bag is making page lifters. So we're gonna be making page lifters next. All right, I wanna briefly talk about your handouts. So you have this particular handout that has 30 make and take projects. You scan the QR code with your phone or your iPad and it will go through all these videos for an assortment of items that are for eating and drinking. Um, scan this one for an assortment of items that you can make for hearing and communicating. It shows all the items that are on that, um, embedded in that video. 
and then on the back side, you have uh, reading and writing and a QR code and making for um, low vision. And this handout is kind of cool because this is about all these specialty tapes that I've been talking about. Um, the non-slip rubber and like where do you find it? What is it used for? What is the name? So this is a nice good reference sheet for you. And then this is a nice sheet of tools and some of the plastics and adhesives that I also work with and the QR codes that take you to where do you find these uh, different tools and materials. But what if you had a very difficult time turning pages? So in this bag, you have three page lifters. And these page lifters are made out of corrugated plastic. It's got Remo 1 on the two sides, um, foamy. And you will see the video on how we make thousands of these very, very quickly. And here's how we're going to attach it. Again, I'm taking the side of my thumb and I'm flicking. So go ahead and take these backings off. Do not use your fingernails, you'll lose time. That's why the side of your thumb and the flick method seems to work best. There we go. So what we're going to do is, if this was a book, right, we'll put that there, and then we want to stagger them so that our next page And that's what I like about um, the Remo is, for the most part, being able to reposition. There we go. Okay, and then my third one. I've got one, two, if this was a book. my second page then here's my third page and I want to line that up right below the pink and I want to push down and then fold over so now I've got my page lifters so in a book to be able to turn the pages so that's something simple for um, page lifters for books now you can also make uh, page lifters, I discovered, out of clothespins, miniature clothespins fit inside of those flutes. And looking at just another way of um, having ways to be able to turn pages for grasping impairments. All right. Ah, we have one more project. And then I want to go back and show you some more examples of what you can do with the materials. So this last project is a universal cuff. And you, you will see other things that you can do with this universal cuff kit. Um, you're just going to make kind of a spoon holder. But you can always go to the hardware store and buy an industrial twist tie, buy a a T joint, you can do other things that I'm going to show you, but here's just your basic uh, universal cuff. All right, we're going to talk about the universal cuff kit, and we have this wire. So I'm just going to go ahead, um, take the materials out of your kit. You have two D rings. You're going to need a spoon, you know, like a plastic spoon or something, or you can, you can watch here. Um, you would also need a pair of scissors um, for this project as well. This tan material that I'm touching, that is called double-sided loop. It's a, they use it for like splinting material. But remember that Veltex that I was showing you earlier for the seatbelt gripper? You can take that material and fold it in half and do a straight line stitch and you can make your own double-sided loop material. And then the black material is Velcro one wrap. It's two inches wide by eight inches long and it's got loop on one side and hook on the other. 
And then there is a one inch D ring and there's a two inch D ring so that you can take this apart. If you want to make two universal cuffs out of these materials, you can do that as well. So everybody should have that laid out in front of them. Piece, but we'll talk about what you can also do with this piece. The first thing we're going to do is we have our Velcro one wrap and we're going to cut a piece off the end, two pieces off the end actually. So the two pieces that I'm cutting off the end is going to be about the, the width of the double-sided loop. So you're going to cut off about, uh, about an inch and a half of uh, a piece of, of the one wrap. One piece, we're going to cut into like a triangle. That's going to be our closing tab. And this next piece, we are going to put this on here 50%. And we're going to slide this over. I'm going to pull that off. This is a double faced loop material. And now we're going to. So yeah, you can peel that off, and that's what I like about um, Velcro hook and loop material is that you can constantly like reposition it. So I've got this tab on the end. I'm just dropping over my two inch D ring on the end, and then rather than having to sew it, this is what I like about one wrap because that's what's going to hold that. It. So now we have our D ring. So go ahead and put your D ring on one of the ends. And the one wrap is just going to hold the D-ring. So that's great. So everybody should have a D-ring on one end. Um, then we're going to put our piece of Velcro here with the um, one wrap. So notice I now I have my, you know, my remaining piece of Velcro brand one wrap and I have attached it to the bottom of that double-sided loop. So you should, should be able to hook on this side. Now, over here, what we're going to do, we're gonna put our closure on. So I'm gonna put this on. So at the opposite end, that piece that you went and trimmed um, the corner on that's our closure that's that that's a piece that's going to slide through that d-ring and don't worry like if you didn't put it on the right side you know on the if it was on the bottom or the top you can always pull it off and and reposition it that sticks up and i'm going to thread this through but first i want to create a pocket i'm going to wrap this so i'm creating a pocket so what i'm doing is I'm wrapping it around the double-sided tan loop material. So I'm stretching, wrapping it around, and I'm creating a pocket that ultimately my spoon's going to slide into. Around here, nice and tight. So I've got this nice little pocket. All right, now I'm bending this. All right, now that you've got the pocket, now you're gonna come in with your, the, the other end of the double-sided backwards for itself. I'm threading it through my D-ring. So go ahead and take that opposite end and thread it right through that D-ring. I'm pulling it through. So go ahead and pull that all the way through. Okay, the palm of the hand has to go in all the way into the web space. So it has to go into the web space between my thumb and my index finger. And it has to go above my knuckles. So I've slid that all the way through. And then watch this because I'm going to fold this backwards. So watch this next part of the video very carefully. All right, now look, I'm going backwards, back against my wrist and then over. So I'm doing that figure eight. So I'm gonna show it one more time. So in all the way into the web space, all right? Now, look, I'm going backwards. Okay, see how I'm going backwards and then above the wrist and then underneath the wrist. 
and then attaching it on top. Back against my, see I'm going back against the back side of my wrist underneath, kind of like a figure eight. My wrist and then over. And then attaching it and securing it. So that's now holding it. Now I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to slide it in there. So this is a one solution. Somebody. So that's just your, your simple um, universal cuff that you can put a number of things into that pocket. Now the pocket is made out of the one wrap, so you can make it tighter um, or you can make it wider depending upon what you're putting in there. Now that one inch D ring. So let's say uh, you're working with a little kid um, and you're going to want to cut this one, the, the tan double-sided loop material. You can cut that in half so that you have two one inch wide pieces and you could make a universal cuff for a pediatric, for a younger child, just using the one inch D ring that's left on the table. So if you don't want to do something wide, um, you can do that with the, the D ring. It has a difficult time gripping the spoon, but you can do so many more things with this. So for so what's not in your kit is there's not a T joint, there's not an industrial twist tie, just showing you other things that you can go to the hardware store and pick up and, and create some other solutions. For example, what if I have a hard time holding on to maybe a paintbrush. You can go to the hardware store and you can get a T-joint. And this T-joint, this is half inch CPVC pipe. So now look what I'm doing. I'm attaching that. So what I did was I slid in a piece of one wrap. So I cut my one wrap vertically going down and I slid it through the center of the T-joint so it attaches to the double-sided loop on the inside. And now I've got... Okay, and then this is half-inch CPVC pipe. So on the left here, there's half-inch CPVC pipe and this black material is called Instamorph. So I just filled up the cavity with that so that I could get that to slide into my T-joint. So you can put all sorts of things inside of half inch CPVC pipe that then you can then pop in. So this piece of pipe is three quarters of an inch that's on the end of the foam paintbrush. Got a variety of things that I can kind of slide in there. Notice on the paintbrush, I went and put um, a piece of half inch CPVC, filled it up with some Instamorph. So now I'm going to do, this is gonna be different, I'm tipping it upside down and notice my closure is in the wrong place. So this, I'm gonna just change it around, kind of slide that through. Again, I'm putting my hand into the web seat. See it's above my knuckles here and I'm coming around like this, All right? Now I can put a paintbrush in there and I can rotate to where that paintbrush needs to be. I could also cut it off and make it shorter. Um, I can also take this piece out and... I just took a needle nose pliers and I just gripped down to the pipe, pulled it out of the T-joint. Here I've taken one of these metal clothespins and I can put this. Turns out that these metal clothespins also fit in beautifully inside of half inch CPVC. Piece it in. And so I have another way of being able to um, hold and grip. And rotate that around. So if I wanted to do something with my paintbrush like this and rotate it, I could also do something like that, right? Or um, a writing instrument or anything. So this is just in terms of grasping. 
There's also, um, I could put a hairbrush in here. I can create an attachment like if I have a hard time gripping onto a hairbrush. And then I also show other things you can do with putting a T-joint into here and with industrial twist ties that you can buy at the hardware store and looking at putting objects inside of here in terms of grasping or in some cases what I've done is I've also been able to put a plastic spoon inside of the T-joint as well. So that gives you a variety of different things you can do. Um, but what if you've got somebody that has little hands? So if you have little hands, what I did was I put in this extra ring so that you can take this off and take a pair of scissors and I probably don't need all of that because I've got small hands so this time my closure I'm going to cut off on here one piece just a little bit That. I'm going to put my D-ring on there, close that off, and then on the other end is my tab, and now this end is my pocket. I'm going to roll that up, and you can roll it as tight as you want depending upon the object that you're planning to put inside there, right? And I'm threading this through again. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around onto the back side of my hand. So I slide it through. Again, I'm above my knuckles. Now I go backwards, right? And then I reach underneath and grab it. And I close off my pocket here. So my pocket is now closed off. And now. I can put my spoon in there. So another option that you can do in making um, a gripping solution or a universal cuff. All right. So those are the main projects. And what I want to do is come back to these videos because I wanted to show you some more examples. So remember when I was talking about the pop socket and creating a, um, a simple mounting solution. Buffering, buffering. So this is where I will attach these um, stress balls or stress stars on top of a pop socket. And then the plastic pop socket will glide across the uh, table. And then I, at an angle, at about a 45 degree angle, is where I push the pen right through the top part of the star. And then the pop socket, I can also adjust in terms of the angle um, to be able to pop up the writing thing. So that's another kind of example. When I was showing the industrial twist tie, what I wanted to do was show you um, how you can also take that industrial twist tie and you can create writing um, solutions with that as well. Properly, um, it, it's basically just an industrial twist tie that's bent around the stylus in two places. Um, it, the benefit of the industrial twist tie is that it's an everyday material that's easy to find. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, and I can slide it onto my hand and it gives me a very natural feel um, with the pencil or the Apple pen. Um, the other benefit is that because it's a flexible material, you can really change the angle of of the Apple Pencil if you wanted to hold it um, 
in, in any sort of different way or different angle. It allows you to hold the pen very upright or put some angle on the, on the pen, um, which can change sort of line thickness when you're using it. Um, it also is easy to adjust how close to um, the surface you're drawing on. You can, you can make the, the pencil much farther away or much closer to the surface um, fairly easily. Okay, so what I'm wondering is, we've been going for about an hour and a half. Do we need to take about a 10 minute break? What do you suggest? Therese, this is Megan. I'm actually wondering if instead of a break, if we could take a few pauses between and let folks uh, ask questions or maybe replay the parts that they're having a hard time catching. Okay. Would that be okay? Yes. Cool, so does anybody have a, a standing question for Therese? Oh, you know what? The, I just saw in the chat, there's a bunch of questions in no, there. No, you're okay. Catherine has been supporting in the chat, so you're just fine. Oh, cool. Uh, but we do have uh, questions. People want to know if these little tutorial clips that you're showing, are these available to, to stream anywhere? Now, I sent Catherine a copy of all of those. Um, so a couple of things, those videos that go along with all the items in your, your um, kit, is um, Catherine has those videos. And then as far as the other videos, you can, I have over 2000 how-to videos. So um, some of the videos are like in the book, but the other videos, if you, my channel is A-T-I-N-N-H is the name of the YouTube channel. And so if you, you know, Google that uh, A-T-I-N-N-H YouTube channel, you can go to there and subscribe and check out all of the different how-to videos that are on, on that. Um, the nice thing about the book is that they're all organized into the categories like making reading and writing solutions and the YouTube videos for that or um, making one-handed solutions and the YouTube videos for that and grisp it, grasping and and making um, communication devices. And so, yes, yeah, so there's a, yeah, like, yeah, over 2000 videos over the last um, 15 years that I keep putting up every time I create something, something new. That is an impressive library and resource. Thank you for making that. Um, we do have a, a, actually a really fun question that I think you might like. It's not quite related to anything you've shown yet, but it's a creative problem solving question. What, oh, kind good. Uses, what kind of uses can you imagine for those giant vinyl banners? Someone's been holding on to two of them because they can't bear throwing them out. Yeah, so um, vinyl has a very um, high fr or um, very slippery material. And so when I look at the vinyl, vinyl will slide across surfaces um, very easily. And so I like to, like for a transfer aid, um, so I use it a couple different ways is those vinyl banners. Um, I remember my mom having a hard time transferring in and out of the car, like from her wheelchair. And so I cut up some of that vinyl material and I would put that lock lift rug ripper tape that I, um, you all have a sample on. So the lock lift rug ripper tape would be on one part of the vinyl that would grip onto her pants. And then the vinyl would just slide right across the uh, car seat. And then I also used it in a workplace. Like if we've got to slide things, um, maybe we have to slide furniture, we've got to slide boxes, we have to slide things on a table top and um, vinyl slides very, very, uh, it's really slippery material. So it slides across the table, it slides across the floor. If you're trying to move um, furniture or heavy objects, um, those vinyl banners. So, so always think about anything that's made out of vinyl that um, one side of the banner can be like really quite slippery and it's pretty easy to slide and move around. That is oh, a super clever solution. I absolutely love that. And I'm thinking <laughs> of all the things we can use with our old banners we don't use at the office here. Yeah. Uh, this is sure. the best question I've read yet. Your book is sold out on Amazon. Where can people buy it? It's not sold out on Amazon. Not available on Amazon. So where can we get it? 
it's it's you said it's not available on Amazon. Yeah, people say it's not available on Amazon right now. Well, here, or how do I put something in the chat? If you pull up the chat, you should be able to just paste a link into it. All right. Yeah, so I just put the link in there. So you should be able to click on that. Let's see if it takes me to that. Yeah, there it is. Yes, that works for me. It's showing that there's one new copy available. Well, no, it just means it means that there's nobody else that sells it. It's ah, you're the one. seller. That makes yeah, sense. There's only one new seller. I'm the only seller that sells this book. We have there's 4,000 copies available. Got so, it. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. So this is the one. Very good. Thank you for putting that in the chat. So folks, that's yeah. in the chat. And then one really good question before I think we go back to you. What are okay. the um, basic tools that you have in your toolkit? What should people have on their tool belt? All right. So that one, that handout that I had given of, um, the, that's the thing is that when you use the screen thing, the must have tools and materials. And there was three handouts in your kit. And so just um, you'll see where there's the clever cutter, um, Cora claw, um, an acrylic cutter, ratcheting PVC cutter, a uh, pair of pliers. So these are 85% of all the assistive technology devices I make with, with all these tools, uh, an, a utility knife, a pair of scissors. So having that and just going to the hardware store with the list. Now, the core claw and the clever cutter, this is right, you guys can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. And the, the hack to buying your book was you have to click see all buying options to then add it to your cart. So that's oh. if you want to buy Teresa's book on Amazon, go ahead and select see all buying options and then you can add it to your cart. Is that how that works? Oh, all right. So clever cutter, where's the clever cutter? Here they are. These things are really quite handy. Um, for working with corrugated plastic. So I would recommend, you know, the Clever Cutter. So that's a really good tool. And I don't know if you can get the Cora Claw on um, Amazon. Nope. The core claw. I tried to buy, but had to add it to my wish list. I'm just looking at the chat. Yeah, that's when we learned to do the see all buying options, and then you can add it to your cart. Ah, okay. Now we all know. Thank you for the help, uh, John. <laughs> so I clicked on it, option one, oh, and then add to cart. So that's good to know that it does that on that. And it looks like you can buy multiple if you want to give some out as gifts too. <laughs> yes. And if you want to buy in bulk, like a, you know, a case of books or whatever, um, contact me because we can give you a great deal buying in bulk. All right. Can I go back to the session or do people need a break or what do you suggest, Megan? I think we should go back to the session. Thank you so much for answering those questions. All right, cool. All right. Just gonna look at where I left off here. All right, so I wanted to just say, you know, these are whenever I'm working with corrugated plastic and, you know, we're celebrating Earth Day and repurposing and recycling. And so whenever I'm working with corrugated plastic, these are the essential tools um, that I use. Now, I wanted to mention about the double sided permanent foam mounting tape that you use today. 
And the reason I use this particular tape, while it's not forgiving, you can't remove it, unfortunately, but when I buy it in big rolls, it ends up to be like five cents a foot versus other tapes like dual lock or VHB tape. Dual lock is 60 cents an inch and VHB tape is 10 cents an inch. So you can see that would really add up. So if you needed four inches of dual lock, that's like two bucks for dual lock versus a nickel for an entire foot right? So it's a half a penny an inch. And what's great about that is let's say you make a mistake and you put something together with this really strong foam tape. You can always take the core claw or clever cutter and cut a piece off and you can reuse the corrugated plastic in many ways. And you're only out maybe a nickel's worth of material versus several dollars of all these other specialty tapes. So this double-sided permanent O-mounting tape is a rubber-based adhesive. And uh, rubber is really kind of, it's, it, it, it won't remove it. Now, the, the other types with an acrylic-based or a silicone-based or like the U-glue where you can peel it parallel to the surface, that's really cool when you're doing quick repositioning. That's when you want a removable tape. But when you're working with corrugated plastic, um, this is the tape to go with because you can do rapid prototyping with it. You can put things together. It's one of the few tapes that stick to plastics. And that's the other reason I don't like using glue with corrugated plastic is that glue becomes like real brittle. Glue will not bind to the plastic. Um, glue is a real problem when you're working with plastics. Whereas this rubber-based double-sided permanent foam mounting tape really grips to the plastics. Um, I also wanted to point out that clothespins, clothespins come in all different sizes and you can be really creative with the different clothespins inside of PVC pipe, inside of the uh, plastic flutes. And so I've become obsessed with clothespins and hundreds of things you can make with the clothespins because they clamp on. So that's like really cool. Um, another material that I really like are those uh, bookends. You know, people have been tossing out bookends. And I discovered that if I took two bookends and put corner guard to create like a little lip there, that I could easily drop my iPad in. I could turn on the zoom feature on the iPad or the magnifier. And then on the other side, I've got my document holder. So you guys all have your document holder piece, your scrap piece of corrugated plastic that I said, you know, use that to drop in. And then you can scan and read. You can have the OCR um, apps that will scan and read your document just by offsetting two uh, bookends. It's pretty simple. Um, this next one, it's buffering, must be a video. All right, so what I'm showing here in this particular picture. So when it came in the mail, it was probably all attached like this. However, just wanting to explain that this is a quick grip clamp. This button here. So this is a miniature quick grip clamp. And this is taking, you know, corrugated plastic and an eye selfie stick and making a multi-use device. It can be for an iPad. It can be used for a cup holder. And so I'm showing how these quick grip clamps work. There's one lever that you push down to slide the bar back and forth. And then the second lever is for tightening. Is for the bar to slide back and forth. This button here is to tighten. This is Instamorph, and the Instamorph is formed around the end of the quick grip clamp so it doesn't rotate around. So I'm going to slide this into the piece of Instamorph, and it should fit right over the top. There we go. Now I'm going to attach it to the table here. I'm going to slide this into place. Made that nice and tight. 
now the phone pops in. Now, if I don't want to put my cell phone here and I want to put an iPad. So I've used that for the cell phone for like a document reader or a scan and read station using seeing AI app. So you can do all sorts of okay. stuff. What I can do is take this attachment. This attachment is made out of um, Velcro brand industrial hook. And I just pop that attachment in. There we go. And then notice that I put an interface. That's what this piece is. It has industrial loop on one side of the transparency film and then U glue on the other side. And the reason for that exit is so that you can get your fingers around it and to pull it off or put it back on. When you mount this, if you look at this, I'm putting it on there and pulling it down. Okay. The other part I wanted to mention is, is that if I take this setup and I rotate it around with the upside down elbow, I get a lot more stability so that then I can mount this here to interact with the iPad. Now, the other thing you can do is you can take this piece. This is called Velcro brand one wrap. So it's hook on one side, loop on the other. And I can now turn this into a cup holder. So you can be creative. You could also put um, a magnifier on here with the one wrap. So there you have it. Oh, and then to release that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button. And now it slides off. All right. This next picture is with lock line, but this one is three quarter inch lock line um, versus the prior video showed half inch lock line. And so what I want you to see here is notice that I've snapped in an elbow on the end. Notice there's a silicone band. So I have a fixed mounting disc or a fixed mounting square that you can get from modularhose.com. And you slide the little, little um, band that holds your cell phone in on each corner. But then look at where I've attached it to the footrest. So you all have a piece of gripper loop in your kit that you've used for like making a seatbelt gripper. But that gripper loop, you can use that for making a mounting solution for the footrest on a wheelchair. Like if you wanted to take your one wrap and wrap that around. So the gripper loop is to keep it from things twirling around to grip the rubber right on to things that are round. So this was a nice, simple solution for a cell phone mount on a wheelchair. And I just think that everybody needs to have access to a phone and always looking at everybody's wheelchairs are different and always having to come up with different mounting solutions for the wheelchair. So this particular mounting solution on the wheelchair, and again, it's everybody's wheelchair is different. And so what I came up with using Velcro brand one wrap, and while this is kind of buffering, you're gonna see how I've used the armrest and in this particular picture, just gonna pull this back again. So she is taking photographs wow. and well, also we're taking pictures. I'm just gonna pause that. So here I've created a tube that the PVC pipe can drop down into. And I've combined half inch lock line with three quarter inch PVC pipe. And then I made a U-mount track that this whole thing slides right over this mounting square. And then the iPad slides in a track. This is corner guard. And then her headrest, I'm gonna show you what I did with the headrest so that she can take photos with an eye selfie button, which is Bluetooth. Because this yellow switch Every time she tries to hit the yellow switch, first of all, um, the amount of effort and the amount of range of motion that it requires her to access. So I don't like using this yellow switch. 
So what I did instead was I created taking one wrap, wrapping it around the outside of her headrest with the soft part of the loop facing out, and then mounting one of these eye selfie buttons. And I put a little rubber bumper in the center of the eye selfie button, attach that to the double-sided loop so that she can use her head and she just hits the little rubber bumper that then depresses the Bluetooth switch. So these switches I got for $5 at a store called Five Below and it interfaces with the iPad. And so, or you could also put a spec switch in there as well. All right, I wanna look at some other examples here. So I've been making um, dual mounts. So one of the videos I was showing was just a single mount. So this next video is showing how do I attach two arms cantilever onto the back of a student's desk and just showing, this is now going to be showing you um, the use of a bigger um, arm, uh, bigger clamp. Yeah, I just wanted to point out a couple of things about this particular setup. If you're gonna put it on a, a table or a wheelchair tray, so I want you to remember the elbow. See this upside down elbow? And that is attached to the industrial Velcro. It's a different type of a Velcro. It's rated at 12 pounds per square inch. So theoretically you can hold something about 75 pounds. Um, if you're going to rotate or change, grab back here and do all the adjustments. To attach and remove it, you need to know you've got two levers here. This lever allows the bar to slide up and down, to, so to expand it or make it smaller. Once you have it in position, this lever tightens it. You've got a steel bar coming up here. These are quick grip clamps. This can slide right off. You can see the metal bar. And so that's kind of the setup for people who are heavy hitters or heavy um, iPad users and need additional reinforcement and support. So you're gonna... All right, so here's our latest. And so for attaching, what I want you to see that I did here is, I'll just pop this off. All right, so we have an elbow, a double, an elbow, a fixed mount with industrial velcro. So what I'm making here is, this is for a student with muscular dystrophy that has a hard time feeding himself. And so I've made arm troughs out of recycled election signs that I then can attach using industrial Velcro to the dual lock material. Velcro hook. So it's an industrial hook made by Velcro. All right. Then what I did, this black material um, is black Instamorph that I also put industrial Velcro. And when I was heating up the, the Instamorph, what I did was wrapped it around this elbow. Then what I did was I flattened it down on the table and I wanted a couple of bases where I could attach to my arm trough. So now I'm gonna snap that in. There we go. I'm gonna rotate this around, but you want, I want you to see where you've got a lot of flexibility with these joints. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my arm trough on here. There, I got my arm trough. Now I can bend it up, I can bend it down, I can rotate it to the left, I can rotate it over to the right. So you've got some flexibility there. Now I wanna put an elbow cup on the bottom so that a place for the elbow to rest into. There we go. So there's my elbow, okay? Now over here, I want my plate to spin. So this is a coupler and I've got some rotation here. Um, so I've got some rotation for my plate. And so these are these casters from the art store that you're supposed to put on like, you know, on these legs of chairs. 
And because it spins, I'm like, wow, I could just attach that. And then I'm using new glue to secure that to this um, base here. I can make this longer, shorter because I'm using um, a coupler to put my PVC pipe pieces together. And I can also do that with lock line that I showed you in the previous video. So in the previous video, I did show about bending the spoon downward. So we're going to attach this. Now I'm going to drop my elbow in. So you can see where I'm dropping my elbow in. Okay. So this makes it, it I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this over here. I'm going to rotate a little bit more. There we go. Now, oh, you know what? That actually, that feels pretty good. So now it means I have to move my plate. And what's cool about that is I'm using this product that is called Remo 2. So now I can figure out where do I want my plate to go. So I'm like going, okay, so my elbow is going to drop in here like this. And maybe I want my plate to go here. Okay. So now I'm going to put this right underneath here. And later, I'm going to replace that with U glue, something more permanent. But this is kind of cool for your trial and error. So now we're going to try that one more time. Wrap that around. So that just gives you an idea of, you know, things that, you know, problem solving, rapid prototyping, um, just that whole trial and error thing. All right. So you can see this is, a, you know, the scan and read station. So the spring clip that you made, you can also take that spring clip and you can attach it to a winged elbow and you can turn it into um, a scan and read station with the spring clip. But I want to talk about the spring clip because that's in there and what we can do with that. So here's what I'm going to do is it's been scored in the middle. It's also been scored on these two sides as well. So one score line here, you flip it over and you do three quarters of an inch to the left and to the right of the score line. So we snap it at the score line. Then we go ahead and remove. So you've already made the spring clip. This is a wider spring clip. And when the spring clip is fully closed, it's at about a 30 degree angle. And so that's how I was able to. All right, so here's our latest. And so to use it to make the document. So here's another. Hey, I want to show you my really cool spring loaded little attachment to my AT pad stand that enables people to be able to feed themselves without any hands for a sandwich. So we're just going to put this on top of here. Notice it's spring loaded. We take the sandwich and we slide the sandwich in here. Then what's really great because there's not a whole lot of tension is I can just bite on it. And as I'm eating it, I'm just gradually pulling it towards me and it slides very easily, but yet maintains enough tension on it to hold the sandwich in place. Sweet. There you have it. Hands-free sandwich holder. So rather than just cutting these pieces, right, so to cut it, you can, I showed that before, I'm putting my two fingers here and sliding it through. Um, now, what I want to do is just put one tine in because I'm going to score. So I'm just showing you how to use um, the uh, cork claw for it. And so when I put that down, you need to understand that the razor blade in here is curved and you never push down. You always slide in and then using your finger to kind of pull up like you're flipping a page, right? So that's why my finger is here. And so my thumb is down here to offer some resistance. And now, see, I can slide. So it should just slide like butter. Now I notice that I've got a little bit of a lip going here, and that was when I separated. So I'm going to rotate this around because I don't have any lip there. And now it should just go, yep, look at that. I'm able to get in there and just slide. And so scoring it works really great. Now, if I see something like this, okay, if I see that it's buckling, it tells me that 
um, you are pushing down. So I'm going to show it again on this sheet. Okay. So this is the wrong way. So the wrong way is I'm doing this, pulling it, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't have resistance. It should slide like butter. See the buckling here? That means that you were pulling on it versus pushing it through it or gliding it through. Now I'm going to do it one more time. And rather than pulling like this, putting my finger up here and lifting up a little bit. So then see how this glides and it's parallel? This never comes down. This is just gliding right through. So that finger, because I'm putting the pressure up here, not here, not here. So it's just like, so that's where it's, it's really very, just glides right through, not an issue. So that's what I'm looking for. And you can see how the lines are nice and clean. It also shows me that you're using the tool correctly. If I see this, it means you're not using the tool correctly. All right, I wanna talk about some tips and tricks of working with the Clever Cutter. So this is like, because the Cora Claw that I was showing you, that sells for around 22 to $25. And then somebody showed me these box cutters that are called Clever Cutters. And I thought, you know what? I can slide that inside the flute as well. And I can do some cool trimming with it. And so I've showed the videos before, which this is, you know, easier than the Cora Claw because you slide it in and you just slide it through, right? And then I showed on how you can get underneath and then hooking that in. And then I'm grabbing up here and sliding. But sometimes, see how this is all wavy? So you can straighten that out. And this is, rather than trying to, I'm putting it like perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle and I'm just sliding this through, right? And removing any of that excess. Another thing that often happens is sometimes you get these lips on here and those lips have to get removed as well. So the same thing, I'm going to tip it upside down and I've got the lip down here and now I'm lining that up. Quite relaxing. Makes me feel like I'm whittling something here, but so it comes off really easily and it straightens it up. This one I need to take some off. And notice how I'm also kind of like on an angle here instead of here. I'm coming, I'm going to show that one more time. See, I'm doing this. So another time is, is that some so that's the so part. what i'm doing here is i'm heating up the socket end because okay so a lot of people have a hard time popping in balls and sockets of the lock line and then the pliers can be really expensive so check this out if the if you dip the socket end into hot water it snaps in really easily because it causes it to expand because this hot water is going to cause that socket end to loosen up to expand a little bit and I want to keep this end cold. And this way I can save $12 not having to buy the pliers for half inch lock line. So now I'm grabbing a hold of this, I've got my socket, and now all I have to do is just snap it together. And when it cools down, it's going to get tighter. But that's something simple, and then to remove it, I just pop it apart. So that's how easy it is to snap these pieces together. All right, so this is fine for my cell phone, but there are cell phones that are wider. So that's why I've been making this little contraption. But I wanna come around and make something to grip the top. So if you've got a wider phone, that's a telescope. So rather than on this side, we So in this video, I wanted to show you how easy it is to work with Instamorph. Flip it around to the back side. So I'm gonna grab my Instamorph. I'm going to throw that on the table and pushing straight down on it, fold it straight down, fold to the left, fold to the right, straight down, and then one more time, straight down. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this a little bit and I'm going to put it on the inside here.
and now I want it to come probably around like this is what I'm looking at. And I really, I put three teaspoons in there, I really only need two because looking at this. But I also want it to telescope, so I don't want to interfere with it closing. So I've got my hooks here. Now, that can go in here. And again, that can be dropped over and then heated later or released. So I'm going to let that cool down. And we'll try that with a bigger phone. And this is pretty cool because that fits in there. So the nice thing about Instamorph is it's non-toxic, it's biodegradable. Um, you can heat it over and over again, um, up to maybe about, I would say six times, and then it starts to kind of get brittle. So I love the fact that if I make a mistake, I can just throw it back in hot water again. So I've shown you like the quick grip clamp where I've created an interface to go over a bar clamp. Um, if you're doing that in this video, because it's really hot, it's going to weld against the plastic. So there's no way I can remove it. If I want to create something removable, I'll use chapstick or I'll use water and I will put that material um, chapstick right onto the quick grip clamp so that kind of like a dental impression. So I'll take the Instamorph and I will push it over an object to get an imprint type of thing. And then I'll pull it off so that when it hardens, I can slide it back on and off, on and off. So sometimes you want it to be permanent and sometimes you want Instamorph to be removable. The other part is five minutes. All it takes is five minutes for it to cool down and then harden. So fabulous material to work with. Um, just wanting to show, you know, there was a question about um, tools. So this is an acrylic cutter. So I do work with acrylic and notice that the acrylic cutter has a triangular blade. This tip of the blade is what I use to create a score line with acrylic. And then I will snap that score line off on the edge of a table. Then on the inside of the blade is I'll use to deburr the acrylic, to smoothen the acrylic off so that you don't have any sharp edges with acrylic. Um, this is a lock line pliers. And again, these can run you, you know, 20 bucks or, or more. Um, and you, you have to put ball end in on one side, socket in on the other, and then you snap your pieces together. This is a mini blowtorch that I use to heat up acrylic. Now acrylic takes 10 seconds. So you go up and down, up and down with the blowtorch for 10 seconds, and then you bend and guess what? It cools down in like five seconds and it then hardens. So you have to work very, very quickly when you're heating and bending acrylic. So I would recommend these little uh, windproof uh, mini torches. The ratcheting PVC cutter, do you notice that you've got these little teeth? Ratcheting tools have these teeth and it compounds the forces. So when you expand it, you put your pipe in there, you squeeze it down, it cuts through, and then you pump. It's kind of like a pumping action. And every time you pump and release, another tooth engages, another tooth engages. And so you get this really great compounding force when working with the ratcheting PVC cutter. I've already demonstrated to you the Cora Claw when we're working with corrugated plastic. Um, the problem with the Cora Claw is, is that you can only use that when you're scoring with the flutes, going in the direction of the flutes. But if you want to score um, across the flutes, like um, I showed in one of the first videos where I had to take a utility knife and score across the flutes, or your pocket Eileen that you all made, you were scoring across the flute. I scored across the flutes for you. And the reason is you get a nice rigid mount scoring across the flutes versus with the flutes. And then the clever cutter I demonstrated. Here's another tool I would highly recommend. And this is called the Big Boss. 
And this will heat up water in nine seconds to boiling temperature. So before I found this big boss at Staples, I was heating water up in a microwave oven or heating water up on the stove. And it was really, um, it took like two minutes versus nine seconds. So I really like um, taking uh, the big boss around. Then here's that ratcheting tool. And a lot of times people have a hard time with arthritis and they have a hard time squeezing tools. So I created a jig out of Instamorph that you can just pop the, the tool into this jig and then you can pump up and down using shoulder forces to cut through the pipe versus using your hands to, to squeeze. Here's an example of Instamorph on the end of a quicker clamp. This was for a gentleman that had to make sandwiches, but he only had the use of one hand. And how are you gonna get the vinyl glove on your hand and putting it on and taking it off? So a one-handed glove donner and doffer out of uh, Instamorph and making a little hook on the end. This is that silicone band that I was showing you that we use for attaching a cell phone to a wheelchair with the, the um, fixed mounting disc. Here's that cell phone holder. So all of these different items in chapter 12 in the book, you scan the QR code and it goes right to the website for um, where do you buy all of these materials. These, this is another silicone band for holding. I like this is for perpendicular mounts, for PVC pipe, for uh, cell phones. So when you have two things that are perpendicular to each other, how do you quickly create a mounting solution for that? And that's these silicone bands work really well. Did you know that picnic tablecloth clamps fit inside of corrugated plastic? You can make a little slit in between the partitions and drop those in. So that's kind of cool. Um, this is what my maker's space closet looks like. And so I use this picture because I want to encourage everybody to look at their spaces as a potential maker space. And I want you to see what does my closet look like. And so the gray um, cart, I roll in and out those, those telescoping crates that you get at Staples. I will load those up with whatever tools, materials I need. I'll stick that in the trunk of my car and then off to the school or off to the website. Uh, not to the website, the work site, I go and I begin fabricating. I also want you to see the clear bins and the clear bags. Cardboard boxes are problematic because you can't see through a cardboard box, but clear bins, you can quickly see where your lock line is, where your three quarter inch PVC pipe is, and you grab what other bin of supplies you need and then you go and hit the road with um, all your tools and materials. You'll also see uh, maker kits. I have a bunch of maker kits depending upon the projects, workshops that I'm gonna do. So this is that scan and read station using the free app from Microsoft called Seeing AI. And notice that the cell phone is resting on top of the spring clip at a 30 degree angle. That seems to be perfect. And as long as the phone is 12 inches away from the sheet of paper, it will easily capture it. Now I made this jig and put this in place because we have quite a few students who are blind um, who need to quickly scan a document. And so you slide the paper right into the jig, turn on seeing AI and tap on the screen and it will quickly scan and read the document or save the document for you. Now the slant board, I was showing you we were making slant boards. Now this is showing I've tipped the slant board um, upside down and I've created a track for the iPad to slide in horizontally. And so this little track just rests right over the top of the portable slant board that I flipped up. Just going to out of that and I want to show you some other really cool things. This, these are these master glides 
um, casters that I really enjoy because I can put Instamorph, I can put this inside of PVC pipe, I can create Lazy Susans, I can create uh, hands-free eating solutions. This is taking that slant board and collapsing it and covering it in a rubber, a non-slip rubber material that you really want to grip on. And, you know, I talk about, we talked about those banners, right? Those, what do you do with those vinyl banners? Uh, because vinyl has a low friction coefficient, it'll slide and glide. But what if you need something with a high friction coefficient? So the rubber material that you have on the bottom of your um, pocket Eileen's, that rubber material is what is covered on the top and the bottom of this transfer board, this uh, board where he has to transfer objects from his work surface um, to another area. So not only does it grip onto his pants, but it also grips onto all the objects that he puts on top of the, uh, I call it the lapeline, so it, to rest on his lap. These are gel pads and these sell for like a buck a piece. You can get them on Amazon. And if it, they lose their stickiness, you wash them in soap and water, like Dawn dishwashing soap, because that's a, like a degreaser soap. Um, it grips off. So I will put these on wheelchair trays. I will put them on um, the car, anything that you want to keep things from sliding off of these gel pads. They're like really wicked cool. But then I found gel tape. So the gel pad tape, non-slip, washable, removable, sticky strips. We have a, a thing called Big Lots. Um, sometimes it's also called Nano Tape. This is a, it's a removable on both sides. It's a silicone base. I can stretch it. And it's one of the few tapes that I can wash it and use it over and over. So it's, again, great to stabilize things. Great for rapid problem solving and prototyping. Um, really fun material. This I discovered was, um, it's a telescoping flagpole holder that I thought was like really cool because it'll go 79 inches. And then on this other end, I will add like Instamorph to it and I'll make it into a telescoping portable reacher because the regular reachers out there, they're, they're too big and you can't carry them around, but having something that's heavy duty, durable, that telescopes that you can put sticky stuff on the bottom or the nano to pick things up off the floor if you're a wheelchair user, it works really cool. So here's another angle of the lab. This is uh, right after the election day and trucks were donating thousands of pieces of corrugated plastic. I think everybody should have one of these Rubbermaid uh, carts on wheels. Not only can I use it as a work surface for cutting up stuff, um, it's great for rolling, um, unloading things from cars, um, rolling it around the classroom, rolling it from building to building. It's a really nice all purpose utility cart. And then I've got my well that I can drop my tools in. It's really kind of fun. So these are the plastics that I've been talking about and recommending, and that's in your handout. So corner guard and lock line and acrylic. One of the things I didn't talk about is that Sintra board. It's another sign making material that you can also get. Um, I get my corrugate, like let's say you don't wanna use recycled election signs. You can buy corrugated plastic in all sorts of colors. I like earlmitch.com and they also will sell um, Sintra board. Um, so Sintra board expanded PVC, it's uh, more expensive than the corrugated plastic, but a little bit more rigid, a little bit more durable. Um, the Instamorph we talked about. These are all the different adhes adhesives. Um, you all have your U-Glue bubble bazooka kit. Um, Remo one was what's on your eye gaze board. And you do have a piece, I think of Remo two, that's been attached to the end of your spring clip. So you can peel that off and stretch that and try that out in different ways. Um, VHB tape, that stands for very high bond. And I use that when I'm putting together 
um, pieces of acrylic um, or I'm mounting corner guard and I'm overlapping corner guard and I want it to be clear and I want it to be really strong and I want it to be, you know, that it will withstand 20 degrees below zero and 500 degrees above zero that has the broadest temperature range. You all use today the double-sided permanent foam mounting tape. That's important that you remember that it has to say permanent foam, not, not the stuff that's got the plaid backing on it. That stuff is a removable. You want permanent. You all use lock lift rug ripper tape. You all know, you've heard of Velcro, right? You know, but I want you to know that Velcro makes over a thousand different hook and loop products and that the industrial Velcro is the strongest because it's rated at 12 pounds per square inch. So if you're holding something, you know, like a communication device or whatever, you need to have something really, really strong. You can't just use your standard hook and loop. You need to go with the industrial hook and loop. Then this roll of material, that's called Tommy tape, or it's a self-adhering silicone tape. And what I love about that is you can wrap that around. You have to you stretch it three times its length. When you wrap it around, it welds to itself and you can put your two objects together. And then if you don't like it, you poke at it with a knife and it comes off as one solid piece of rubber. So you definitely should get a roll of that for your kit. Um, here's showing that scan and read station. This all fits inside of a pencil case. So I wanted something that students with learning disabilities could take to the library. And underneath here is a pop socket. So again, I got to get this up at 30 degrees. Well, pop socket, you can raise one end of the pop socket at 30 degrees. And then using the Remo 2 tape is what secures the cell phone to the top. So this all comes apart. This all fits into a pencil case and it fits into the student's backpack so they can take it to the library. So real nice for scanning and reading. What I wanted to show you here, you, you all made a spring clip and the spring clip, I will use this Remo 2 tape to one is I'll put it on the inside to attach to my slant board but then I'll take a piece and I'll leave the clear backing on and I'll wrap it around the outside. I might also use a plastic straw because when I turn the page, I want the page to slide right underneath the spring clip. And the spring clip will continue to expand as the book gets thicker and thicker. Here's something simple you can do with those fixed mounts that you can get from modular hose is um, instead of buying those silicone bands, I just bought two large rubber bands and I tied knots into both ends and then I slid it over the lock line and now I've got four little loops that I can use to grip onto my cell phone. Um, here I showed you a clamp, but not everybody likes to clamp these holders onto their desk. So now that U-glue that you used, um, I put U-glue on the bottom of the fixed mount and I found scrap pieces of plastic that people were throwing away. So I just created simple mounting bases with them. This is a new discovery this year. I am like so excited about it. It's called cat tongue tape. So when I make slant boards and I put objects, I don't want it to slide around. And before I was using rubber, right? You know, but the problem with using like rubber foam or using foamy, what if the person drools or they get peanut butter and jelly on? It's absolutely a mess. Cat tongue tape, I can peel, stick that in on, on top of my slant boards. If it gets all gunky or drool, what do I do? I turn on the faucet, I'll take that, that, Dawn dishwashing spray stuff that they came out, that power wash stuff. I'll spray that down, wash that up, run it under hot water. I love this tape because it holds up really well, um, nice and grippy, and I can wash it. And I get a nice grippy surface that's washable. And I can't do that with any other uh, grippy material. This I wanted to show you and um, to create an interface with the quicker clamps. And that goes all the way down. I'm just going to pause that a second. 
So this device that's sitting on the table, it's called Beams. And I was working with this lady that lost both of her arms and her legs. And she was like really depressed. And I wanted to encourage her to create music with her residual limbs to break the laser beam, but she couldn't sit upright. So I thought, wow, what if I take the beams unit that's used for you know creating your music with the four laser beams? What if I take that and I mount that Right, and I can bend it and make it bend toward her. There we go. So it keeps it from rotating. Let's see. Here we, <laughs> Here go. we go. Um, so I'm going to attach this right over here. I've got one interface here with go. And this is going to support up to 42 pounds. That right here. There we go. Now we can change this configuration. I can lower the tray table, right? And then you can figure out with somebody in bed, you need to change it to this plate. Now, how are they sitting? And you can change the angle and then just moving their hands. And you can pick all sorts of songs. This is kind of cool. So this is interacting Bluetooth. So depending upon which of the beams, I just found these little, I can change right here. The phone's sitting across the room on a table, so I'm just controlling it on this side with the picking different. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. So you pick your music, right? and getting the arms moving. So that's your option for an uh, attachment to a hospital tree. That's what I like about the beams. Um, so much fun to adapt and really cool. All right, this is, I created a leaf blower adaptation that goes onto the floor. So he uses his chin to drive his wheelchair because he has no use of his upper or lower extremities, but creating employment opportunities and using corner guard and acrylic and lock line and creating just a simple mount that just puts on the uh, footrest for the Black & Decker cordless leaf blower. Oh, here's showing how I mounted the phone with the rubber bands, right, when I tied just a, a knot in both ends of the rubber band and slid it over the center. So just a very simple, low tech way of creating a cell phone mount for doing FaceTime or Zoom meetings. So that's what it looks like on the other side of the phone. And on Amazon, I found these really cool, um, they're like the TV trays, right? Or in bed trays, it's got a little rubber. So. Caitlin has arthrogryposis, and here she's using my scissor platform board, which has the blade recessed in so that she can now use the scissors independently. Um, she's not able to bend over, so now this brings it right to the right height so that she can cut her papers up. This is a simple scan and read uh, station that, guess what? For me, with my cell phone, that stopper then becomes perfect for putting my iPhone Verizon. this way Initial setup one. Insert the battery and before using vertical. The device. So all I'm doing here is I took a piece of recycled election sign material and um, scored it uh, three quarters of uh, 3.5 inches on the left and the right and then on the top and then 
fold this over, making kind of like a half a box and then just using binder clips. This can be made in under one minute. It's 12 inches above the page, but I made it so that the students who are blind, they don't have to guess where to line up the phone. They don't have to guess where to line up the piece of paper in the box. So you slide the paper in the box. The phone is 12 inches away. I put a stopper to the right of the phone. So you slide it all the way up to the stopper and then you turn the app on and individuals who are blind can quickly uh, scan and read a document. And then I also made this portable so that it can fit in the uh, backpack. Make so sure the I only need... Fully... All right, so remember, you all made that um, pocket Eileen, right? Now what I wanna show you is what can I do if I have a 24 inch piece of corrugated plastic? And the reason that that's important is the majority of your election signs are like 24 inches wide. And so this is showing how I'm making a book holder, but I this was inspired, I had dinner with Temple Grandin one day and I was looking at what she was doing with origami. And I thought, can I, can I apply origami principles to corrugated plastic? And what if I only had one sheet and I didn't want to throw anything away? What could I do by um, pre-taping everything ahead of time and handing out these sheets and putting the score lines in? So here's this project that can be done in a minute. book holder. So let's take a look at this board. And we're gonna look at how it has been prepared. So on this side, you see that we've got double sided tape on the two sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this side that's got the Velcro on it. And we're going to make our double uh, lip on this one. So what we want to do is we want to remove the backing here. Then we want to fold over. Okay. And next, we want to take this lip off. So to remove that lip, you can see that I'm putting my clever cutter into that hole and I'm sliding it all the way down. And then on the opposite side, where I can fold it over one more time, like that, and I'm going to slide that all the way down. So this is our, going to be our lip. We're going to use that later, but also showing you that you can lay your tool perpendicular and you can trim off any excess if you want to. So it's kind of cool with that. And then notice here, um, what I often will do is I will release this because sometimes this will want to pry away. So I'll put my clever cutter right in that little hole there. And then I slide that all the way through. That way I know this is going to lay nice and flat and flush. And I'm going to trim off some off of that. All right, so we're gonna let that, put that aside. We're gonna use that a little bit later. All right, so we're still on this side, the side that has no Velcro on, and we're going to peel this backing, and we're gonna fold it over. And notice our mounting base already has the rubber on it. All right. Now, if I fold this, notice that this has got Velcro on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the backing off of the Velcro. That's the hook part. I'm bending this. And now I'm going to bring this, open this up. So I kind of have a triangle. And I find that if I take my hands like this and try to line it up this way. That seems to work. So that I've got my triangle. Push down on that. 
okay? And then we're gonna take this backing off, peel that all the way off. We're gonna line that up right on the edge. And then you wanna go through and again, any part that's possibly sharp, you wanna go and knock off all those corners. Then you have your, your book holder, so you can put your book in there. But if you wanted also, if you had a book that was a little bit taller than this, you could take another piece of corrugated plastic and drop that in there. And you can turn that into a document holder as well with your extra piece of, of corrugated plastic. Then when you're done, going to lift up, going to fold that in, and notice how, look at that, it's not closing, so you can try opening it up this way and folding it over, and now this is nice and portable, and it will fit into your backpack. Again, I notice I've missed a few areas. So that's just showing, you know, how to make a very quick uh, portable book holder that can fit into the backpack using a continuous piece of corrugated plastic. The other thing I like about this project was um, doing away with, before I would cut up all these pieces and I would stick it in a plastic bag and then everybody would get a plastic bag. And I would then of course recycle the bags, but I thought, how can we make projects where we're not using any plastic at all, no plastic bags, so eliminating um, plastic bags and figuring out a way of um, creating a continuous piece of corrugated plastic that has everything that we need on it. So that's just showing, yeah, the, the uh, book holder there. All right, I want to go through. Okay, so what I want to show in this picture is it, this is a chapter 12 about all of these different uh, tapes that I really enjoy using. And so I did all the research to find where's the lowest price on the internet? Where do you find all of these materials? And then the, the QR codes to quickly scan. And so that's, yeah, something um, really simple. And then in the book, showing you that there's one chapter just for, for those of you who don't make assistive technology, but would like to learn about making assistive technology. Chapter one is dedicated to you to develop skills in working with a ratcheting PVC cutter, develop skills working with Instamorph and uh, working with industrial twist ties, working with the specialty tapes. So that's what chapter one is all about, is developing skills, working with these different materials. Then the other chapters go into like making solutions for reading and writing, making solutions for drinking and eating, um, for self-care, um, for blind and low vision, uh, communication, employment related things, um, upper extremity, grasping limitations. So this gives you just examples of what the different pages. There's 1,500 um, pictures and um, illustrations in the book. So it's the most comprehensive uh, maker's book uh, that's out. What I wanted to show in this particular video is, remember at the beginning of my presentation, I was showing an upside down plastic okay? microwavable plate. That won't work on so if you look at what she's sitting on, and that's that flagpole bracket, that our body weight, think about using your body weight as a mounting solution because the microwavable plates will bend and flex and that slides between our thighs. And so this um, woman, she has a hearing loss and she also has cerebral palsy. So she, she's deaf and 
This is this app is called AAC Flip Writer. And with the AAC Flip Writer, it splits the screen in half. So what she will do is she will hit the built-in microphone when Diane's talking and it will type up what Diana is saying. And so Diana can look on her side of the screen to see what she's saying. And then she can look on the other side. And then, you know, that's, let's just watch this communication. So besides going to school, <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? So the AAC flip writer, it has, you can save constant phrases. It's got the word prediction, sentence prediction, but I put that interface that the Velcro on the back of the iPad and then mounted it onto the center board and then mounted the center board to the top of the flagpole bracket. So that's the, the mounting solution. So over here, this metal, this was a thousand dollar daisy mount that she was using for a five thousand uh, dollar communication device. And the problem was, is that when the communication device was in front of her um, with the Dynavox was that she couldn't see the body language. Seventy percent of communication is body language. And when you're deaf, you really rely on the body language. So just showing about this being another solution for um, communicating. So this was using, I wanted to show you the bookends. So what we're finding at our university is, um, one is we're having a lot of people retire. Two is people are using less books, less three ring binders. And there's tons of these bookends that are getting tossed out. And so I put rubber material on the bottom, so it grips onto the surface. And then I add corner guard strips on the top with the VHB tape. And I can use these for scanning and reading stations. So don't throw away bookends, they, they come in handy. Going to come back up to the top. This was what I, you couldn't see before. And this is these rubber bumpers you get in the housewares department. So anytime you have something that you have to push straight down on and somebody doesn't have that ability, putting a rubber bumper on top because tiny little head movements, hitting that little rubber bumper can depress the switch. So this is that $5 Bluetooth switch that interfaced with the iPad that I wanted to show. And I'm thinking about, I'm not sure if we did the, um, the document holder. And that was that last piece of corrugated plastic that you had in your, your kit. It was a scrap piece. All right, I wanna show you what else you can do with this. So yes, you can use it for your cell phone. You can use it for an iPad. Um, I like the fact that you can change, you can make it steeper or shallower. Um, if I make it steeper and slide it all the way up so that it's almost vertical, I drop a piece of cardboard or a scrap piece of corrugated plastic and now I have a document holder. So you can see where it comes all the way up, right? 
So another thing that you can do with your pocket Eileen. All right, so I wanted to make sure. Just gonna stop a second to see if we have um, any more questions. What do we got in the chat here? We have a question here wondering, what are your essential tools when you're traveling? What, what's, what's with you when you're traveling? So those were the tools I was showing with, um, let's go back to, Uh, this one. All right, so these are the tools that I travel with. I travel with an acrylic cutter, uh, ratcheting, not a ratcheting PB. I, I, this is a lock line pliers. I travel with a mini blowtorch, a ratcheting PVC cutter, a core claw, a clever cutter, um, a pair of scissors that are not here, and scissors. That's the other thing about scissors. You know, scissors can get really gunked up, and the way to get rid of gunk is you can use baby oil, you can use an orange rind, but now they sell Teflon-coated scissors, non-stick scissors, so your scissors don't get all gunked up. So that's another thing that um, you may want to think about. Um, the big boss. Now, the big boss will withstand, I can put a half a gallon water in this reservoir, but then I found, I went to Rite Aid and I found just a simple hot pot, right? For like seven bucks. So I'll throw that in my suitcase too, or in my crate. Cause you know, yeah, it takes a couple of minutes to get the water boiling for Instamorph. I don't get it in nine seconds. Um, so now I use the big boss at my office, but when I'm traveling, I use just a, a cheap $7 hot pot that I can plug into any outlet and I can quickly boil some water that way. So those are the main tools that I use when I'm out on the road making. Oh, so. So this um, was the hot pot that I found at um, Rite Aid. Mm, buffering, buffering. Ah, you've seen hot pots before. They're pretty inexpensive. What I wanted to show you here was, um, this is called my Sushi Susan. And these are two upside down plastic plates. And this will rotate around. He uses his um, head, his upper lip, and he pushes the fork and it goes around. And he wanted to eat sushi independently. And so coming up with a way that he could feed himself independently. And so I call it the, the uh, Sushi Susan. Um, this is, you all have a uh, Velcro one wrap. And here's an example of creating a cup holder for a grasping impairment. So if you have one wrap going one direction and one wrap going the opposite direction, perpendicular, now you have a nice cup holder. Your hand slides in there and you drop your cup in. And so this works out really great with tapered beverage containers where the beverage container is narrower on the bottom and wider on the top. Um, here was a gentleman that uh, quadruple amputee that rolls around on the floor in his house. And so he wanted everything to be mounted much lower and not onto a table. And so creating a hands-free drinking solution, a hands-free eating solution. So I call it the virtual personal care assistant here. 
and then using an iPad, um, communicating frisbees. I thought, hey, I could get a frisbee to twirl around. I can make a hands-free eating solution out of a frisbee. So here's the cantilever cup holder with one wrap and lock line. Then I, I was like, wow, you know what? I could create a little shelf that I could turn my flagpole bracket upside down and modular hose sells a tubular clamp that you can clamp right onto your wheelchair. And uh, flagpole brackets have set screws. So it works great with three quarter inch PVC pipe. So creating a little holder that way. Um, creating cup holders on canes. So one of my students is a uh, mechanical engineering student and he was tired of people always having to carry his beverage. So I carry, made a beverage holder that attaches to his canes. And here's, you know, body mounting solution where I'm using the one wrap and then I, I slide the cell phone in backwards into Verizon cells, a, a little holster clamp that can clip onto your waistband. So I figured out how he could quickly type independently. And so using the universal cuff with a stylus, so this clamps right onto his thigh. And then look at the cup holder that I made on his wheelchair. So he can reach down, grab his beverage. So here's another example of creating a cup holder with Velcro one wrap that you can put on a cane. So you can see how I link the two together and you just drop your cup in there. And then I put, added a little bumper so that the cup wouldn't keep going bang, bang, bang. So this would be nice and solid and secure for his cup. Then there are beverage containers that are not tapered. So like a bottle, you know, how do you drink from a bottle or um, other containers? So creating a holster. So here's Morgan, the cup holder. Take a look. Oftentimes with people in, oh, that's the personal care assistant. I was really trying to show this picture. This is what I was wanting. So when I talked about containers that are not tapered like a soda can, that lock lift rug gripper tape, that yellow tape with the beeswax, I will wrap that around the cane, around the the can, the soda can, then I'll wrap one wrap and one wrap comes in, this is a gray one wrap, comes in all different colors and then attach it that way. So he's able to roll his wheelchair up and drink from his soda can that way. Here's there, here you can see the lock lift rug wrapper tape around the soda can and then Velcro one wrap around that and then attached to the industrial Velcro there. So very, very simple with this whole cantilever approach for drinking beverages. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the Sippy Susan. So these little tiny cups, same thing, rotates and spins around very easily. So finding all sorts of things for spinning. Um, this one I found, um, this is kind of a funny clip if it loads. It's only four seconds, but here we go. So I had my hands free and then I was watching The Simpsons and um, this was a funny uh, eating solution. So he spins us around. So I'm like, hey, that's just like mine. All right, yeah. Hi, Therese. Um, this is Catherine. I'm going to go ahead and um, hop on and let you know maybe that we have about five minutes left. Um, so if you want to prioritize anything else you want to share or if you want to um, um, take any questions from the audience. Yeah. OK, great. So um, what I wanted to share here is I wanted to show this picture. And this is just um, uh, hands-free body mounting solution, right? For carrying a beverage, but then how you all can get six pack abs in uh, five minutes or less. Here's your six pack abs solution. 
So you can get a whole six pack around your waist, underneath your jacket. It works great at sporting events. So thought you would enjoy that one. Um, and then just wanting to quickly show this on how do you make a, a hands-free um, drinking solution. We'll see how fast the internet is. All right, so now that we've got the Sushi Susan, now let's talk about what else you could do with this whole configuration. So this is, I went and just snipped in between the partitions, the spoons fit in and they twirl around, um, showing that I wanted to make a transformer kit that you could take apart and put it together in like 10 different ways. So I'm gonna take this off and I could leave that on, it doesn't really matter. But I wanna put my um, attachment on here. Okay, I'm take this piece off because now I don't want this to be spinning around. And so now I'm going to put my T joint on. And so this is going to be a hands free um, marshmallow shooter. This is going to block the airflow so we won't have any flow coming out of here. And now I put my 90 degree elbows. Here's my barrel end. So that rotates. And here's my mouthpiece end. And then you just take your miniature marshmallows, you split them in half, drop one in here, and then you can aim in terms of the target. So now it's a hands-free marshmallow shooter. So there's one, um, did anyone know that my hand is raised? No, Rick. Does Rick have a question? Rick, we're working to get you your mic one second, okay? But we do only have a few minutes here, just so folks know. Okay. Go ahead, Rick, you should have the microphone. Oh dear. I don't know if I have a question, but I would like to say that I was not able to keep up with you when you were doing the the pocket Eileen and the other things. And the other thing I would like to say is, since I am blind, a lot of this is tactile. Uh, and um, <clears throat> I'm very good at making, you know, perhaps tactile things. And also, since I am blind, I probably would uh, be good at doing a lot of things that involve uh, audible things that are audible for people that are blind. So, um, uh, Rick, thank you so much for the feedback. And I know Catherine has uh, volunteered to work with you one-on-one -on -one so you can help finish making all of the tools in the kit. And if anybody else needs that one-on-one -on -one support, we're happy to help you. I'm sorry we had to go so quick in this session today. This was very fast and I couldn't keep up. We understand. We're sorry we had to go so quick, but we're gonna reach out to you so we can help you finish making those tools, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank that you was actually quick. I couldn't keep up. This was not... Uh, accommodating. Thank you. We're sorry about that. Um, and we have lots of uh, comments in the chat saying that this was wonderful. Thank you for all the wonderful ideas. So many good ideas. Folks love the six pack and say that's definitely universal design. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that joke. <laughs> um, and it looks like we're at time. So Therese, thank you so, so much for joining us. And I'm going to toss it back to Catherine to come on and close us out today. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Therese. Um, you taught us so much today, not only teaching us how to make specific devices like the Eileen or the spring clip, but even more valuable, you taught us about materials and tools and what could be, um, what should be considered when selecting those materials and tools. Essentially, you gave us a valuable framework upon which we can now move forward and tackle challenges with new conceptual and literal tools in our back pockets. So thank you very much. And um, so now everyone, we aren't going to be coming back into the general conference room after the networking rooms. So I will take this opportunity, opportunity to say goodbye. 
And thank you all for attending today's Ability Tools AT Earth Day conference. I hope that by the close of today's networking sessions, you will have gained something, shared something, and have acquired a stronger sense of community from your peers joining you today. I want to thank the conference planning team, CFILC's Deputy Director, Megan Cadell, who is always an absolute joy to build materials of substance and worth with, our Marketing and Communications Manager, Cameron Moore, for working tirelessly to ensure that we are always seen by our existing community and more easily discovered by those who need support the most. Thank you to our Executive Director, Christina Mills, for joining us under your guidance and making the disability community all the more strong with every passing day. Thanks to CFILC's Program Coordinator, Victor Mendoza, for doing the astounding amount of technical work that it takes to make this all look so easy. And many thanks to Shana Brody, our Operations Manager, and Lisa Austin, our Program Logistics Manager, for dang near flawlessly ensuring that hundreds of people always have exactly what they need exactly when they need it. To all other CFILC staff and volunteers supporting today and leading up to today, thank you also. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you to Sue, Michael, Dan, and all of our panelists who are willing to share their valuable time and knowledge. And thank you to the Department of Rehabilitation for seeing the value in and funding this conference. And of course, thank you to you, the people who make all of this matter. I look forward to continuing to collaborate and work with everything I have to support this community and its needs. And I'll be assisting in the Central California networking room, representing my old stomping ground. But if I don't see you there, I hope to hear you all hear from you all very soon and wish you all the best. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So please go ahead and navigate back to the lobby. And there's the three networking rooms, the northern, central, and southern that you can select from. And we'll have them open no later than 4.15, but they might get going a little early. So we hope to see you there. And thank you, thank you, thank you again to Therese. That was such an excellent presentation and we learned so much from you as we always do. Have a lovely, lovely day and we hope to see y'all in our